Hello guys, full time at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea 1, Arsenal 1. And I suppose my question coming out of that is, when is a good point not a good point? Uh, I think this was a very reasonable result. I think we played well enough. I think a point at Stamford Bridge this season is a decent result. I think they're in better shape than they have been for some time. And yet, it's probably not what we all wanted, not what we hoped for, and perhaps not even what we needed. Um, 10 points now off top spot feels a lot at this early stage of the season but we'll get into that before we do a quick note from me just general housekeeping I've actually had messages from a few fans of Arsenal followers of this channel who have said they've not been seeing as many of my videos like they they subscribe but they haven't been appearing on their homepage all I can say is click the bell below the bell icon below means you'll get alerted whenever there's a new video uh, and you'll definitely see it. I think the algorithm may not be favouring me right now. Um, so I'm going to investigate that and see what I can do about it because it seems some of you are having trouble finding these videos or you're not seeing them pop up on your homepage as much as you were. So apologies for that. Click the bell, solves all those problems. Back to the game, really strong 11 we put out. You know, maybe our strongest, some would say. I mean, Califuri's still absent, but I think from a defensive perspective, some would argue Timber might be their preferred choice at left back. So it's a super strong 11. Um, Thomas Partey in holding midfield. Marino was left out. Declan Rice, that meant played you know, in that kind of left eight role. Martin Odegaard back in the starting 11. Uh, and I thought it was fantastic, I have to say. You know, for a player who's come back from injuries after such a long time, the sheer length of time he was on the field, I think was extraordinary. It's very rare that you'll see a player come back from a major injury and play that long in their first start back. Um, I think it tells you what a big game this was for Arsenal as well and how desperate he was to be out there, how hard he's worked to be ready. In terms of the goal we scored, obviously he's central to it, right? It's a, a beautiful clip pass. I don't think he's exactly looking for Martinelli, he might be looking for Saka. It feels too simplistic almost, doesn't it, to say, well, that's what we've been missing. But that is what we've been missing. And I would point out, it's not just the pass from Odegaard. It's the fact I think he's the guy who wins the ball back to start the move off. That ability to win turnovers in the opposition half, he's so important for that. And I think it's as big a contribution as anything he does on the ball. You know, his pressing, his ability to help coordinate the press, uh, win the ball high, create turnovers, create transition moments and create chances. Good finish from Martinelli as well. Uh, I thought Sanchez kind of showed him that near post, but he still had to take it and I thought it was a really neat finish Um so there you go, we were 1-0 up. First half, I thought, just to go back a bit, Chelsea started well first 10 minutes, but then I thought we gradually took control of the game. You know, we weren't necessarily creating a, a ton of opportunities. We had that disallowed Kai Havertz goal for offside, but I thought we were the better team in the remainder of the first half and probably for most of the second as well. Um, but Chelsea get their goal, right? An individual piece of brilliance, Pedro Neto on the edge of the box, finding a bit of space. Julian Timber absolutely threw himself at the ball, uh, and yet it just went beyond him, beyond Gabriel, beyond David Raya into the bottom corner. They get their equaliser. Um, I kind of felt a draw felt like it, you know, it was a decent enough result for Chelsea. And, and, and I think as a fan base, we'll probably have mixed feelings on it as a result for Arsenal. You know, I'm sure people will be frustrated. They would have wanted all three. Um, I think it's... You know, none of these results on their own are, are necessarily that bad, right? One all at Chelsea, that's fine. Two two at home to Liverpool, yeah, that's fine. Uh, even a one nil at Newcastle, right? A defeat like that, that can happen. That can happen to anybody. It can happen to potential champions. What's difficult is they've all come together. They've come in a run. They've come coupled with a, a Champions League defeat against Inter Milan, and they all contribute to this feeling that the season is kind of escaping from our control um, is that the case well look City got beat again fourth defeat consecutively for City in all competitions you know in terms of can we catch City yeah of course we can Liverpool are streaking away with it right now they've got some really tough fixtures coming up over the next few weeks so I think you know I said my piece Maybe it was after the Liverpool game, I'm not sure. But I said my piece and said, I just don't think this is a season where enough is going for us. And when I look at that moment we had in stoppage time to win it, you know, Trossard goes for the ball, almost takes it off Kai Havertz, really, inside the penalty area. That kind of adds to my conviction that this 
possibly isn't our year. Um, you know, if that had gone in, wow, the narrative shifts, the mood shifts, everything transforms. Um, but let's reserve judgment a little bit. Let's see how Liverpool come through this difficult patch. This home game that they had this weekend against Villa was the first of a tricky run. Okay, they won that one. And once City dropped points, I thought they would. You know, it's such a great opportunity. They were going to be so motivated and, and they seized that chance. But there's more tough games to come for them. So let's give it a few weeks and see where we're at. You know, we're outsiders at this point in Premier League terms. Results around us were pretty good this weekend. Spurs lost, Villa lost, Forest lost. Uh, Chelsea obviously didn't win today. So in that respect, you know, we don't need to worry too much, I don't think, about what's below us. Um, but yeah, I think in the next two or three weeks we'll know exactly what's possible for us in the Premier League. Uh, I'll leave it there for now, guys. Um, as I say, click the bell icon if you want to make sure you get these videos in your inbox on, on your homepage. And I'll speak to you all soon. Uh, let's hope Declan Rice and Bukai Saka aren't very seriously injured, but are injured enough to not have to go on international duty and risk another injury. That'll be ideal. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.